Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, something a little bit different for today's video. I've been clearing away the old tomato plants from our polytunnel and greenhouses, or at least I've made a start on that job. So those plants have gone over, they're a bit of a mess, but I've left some of the stems in the ground. And the reason for that is because I want to take a look at the root system. So earlier in the year, for the first time, I had a go at grafting my own tomato plants. So I took some heritage varieties of tomatoes, grafted them onto a modern hybrid rootstock. Now there are all sorts of advantages that you might get from grafting, but the thing that I was most interested in is disease resistance because I've been growing in the greenhouse soil for some years and I was starting to get the sense that the plants were no longer quite as healthy and vigorous and productive as they used to be. And that can be due to a buildup of pathogens in the soil. And the rootstocks used for the grafted plants, while well, they have much better disease resistance than certainly the old tomato varieties that I was growing. So that was my main motivation for doing that. But I've planted the grafted tomatoes in the greenhouses and here in the polytunnel, I put some ungrafted plants. Now, it's not a perfect comparison, but the soil conditions in the polytunnel, I think are pretty similar to the greenhouse borders. They've had more or less the same kind of treatment. Both soils have been sieved. They've had plenty of organic matter over the years. So I think it's, it's a reasonable comparison. So I thought I would just stick a fork in the ground, have a go at lifting a couple of these root balls out and just see what they look like. Now, one difference, of course, with the ungrafted plants is that you can plant them deep. With the grafted plants, the graft union is typically just an inch or two above the soil level and you don't want to bury that graft union because you don't want the, the top growth, the scion, the variety that you're, you're trying to produce, you don't want that to root down into the soil because then you lose your disease resistance. So those were all set at the same depth they were in the pots. Um, I think there might have been one or two I could lower by an inch or so, but they weren't planted deep. Whereas in the polytunnel, I planted these tomatoes really quite deep. And that should allow new roots to form from the buried portion of the stem. It will be interesting to see the extent to which that has actually happened. But it should also result then in a pretty substantial root system. So I just thought we'd take a look and see what has happened. I'll just move this soaker hose out of the way. I don't know how far this root system will have spread. And I'll start a little way away from this and I'll try and get down nice and nice and deep. Ah, I still have a couple of ties on there. I better cut those first. Now I will undoubtedly break quite a lot of the fine root, but hopefully we can still get some sort of idea. Well, yeah, we've got a few fairly large roots in here. Well, you may be able to make out that there's one large root which is trying to escape the polytunnel entirely. I mean, that's quite a substantial root. It's not bad at all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not that impressive. This is from the main root ball and there's some fine root feeder roots that have come from the stem here 
where it was buried. It's not bad. Obviously I've, I've cut off some of these roots as I lifted it, but the root ball is not that big, I must say. I have seen better. Let's have another go. Oh, I think this one is a bit more substantial. Well, not by much, if at all. There we go. That's the original root system. These larger roots have quite happily escaped from the old root ball. And I dare say these were rather longer and they've been broken off as I've lifted it. And then these new fine feeder roots have developed from the buried part of the stem. But again, it's not an enormous root system. Well, it looks quite a healthy system, but nothing special there. So I'm now in one of the greenhouses and I will do exactly the same here. And to be honest, I'm expecting to see a more robust, a larger root system. I had just an inkling of this earlier in the year because I had a couple of spare grafted plants that I put outdoors. Um, nothing came of those because they got blighted and I had to dig them out. But I did notice then that there were some pretty substantial roots on them and I will be interested to see whether that's also the case in here. So let's take a look. I'll pull this old basil plant up out of the way. Again, I'll get that soaker hose out of our way. Well, it's not quite as substantial as I thought it might be, but what we do have is a lot of these tough old roots spreading all over the place. Yeah, we've got a bit more of that with this plant than the other. Um, the size of the root ball here it's probably not much more than with the ungrafted plant, but you can see these really strong roots. There are far more of those, and I think they are spreading a lot further. I mean, these are broken off. We had only one of these sort of substantial roots on the, on the other plant, but yeah, I don't know how far those actually run. There's no way for me to easily dig the whole root system out, so. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an impressive bit of root on there. Let's have a look at another one. You can see from the way the ground is heaving here that actually there's quite a bit of root spreading out from these plants. Yeah. It's spreading right across the bed here.
Yeah, and I think here, here you should be able to see quite clearly the, the difference between the grafted and the ungrafted plants. I just didn't see this sort of root system on the ungrafted plants. It's just tons of these and they, they go a long way. Be interesting to know just how far these roots travel, but I mean, I'm, it's quite a distance, and they've gone a lot further than that. These are all snapped off. You can see all this root out here in the middle of the bed. And I suspect it's gone right the way to the end of the the bed here. Yeah, there's there's more of it buried here, lots of it. That is quite impressive, I think. So I was a little bit surprised at the size of the root system with the ungrafted plants. I had expected it to be a little bit more substantial and of course if I if I dug it out with a lot more care I would have been able to extract more of that root system but even allowing for broken roots there it wasn't that impressive. Um, this on the other hand I think is a lot more impressive. It's produced some really robust roots and a lot of them and just putting the fork through this bed in various places that root system has spread out throughout this bed right under to where the sweet peppers are growing doesn't appear to have affected them too badly but this bed is full of robust tomato roots and yeah i think there is a clear difference. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect here, but I didn't get these roots or anything like this from the ungrafted plants. So it's interesting just to have a look at the root system to, to see what has happened and compare the two, but what conclusions could we draw? Um, if I think back to when we first grew tomatoes, We've grown them in grow bags and then we moved into pots because I didn't like the depth of the grow bags or, or the difficulty in keeping them properly moistened. In fact, I, I don't really like grow bags at all and I'm sure we improved matters when we moved to growing in pots. And we did that for some time. We, we grew first in our, our smallest greenhouse and that doesn't have soil in there so we had to grow in pots or grow bags or something like that but when we moved to growing in the beds in the greenhouses or in our old polytunnel the results were far better the plants were much more vigorous they were much healthier they cropped better I mean you could just see it from the the size of the stems they were they were just much better plants when they had a good depth of soil they could get their roots into. Now I know you can grow tomatoes in, in fairly small pots quite successfully so long as you keep them fed and so on but I don't think you get the best out of the plants. If you're able to put them into deep fertile soil I think you get a better result. I'm, I'm quite sure of that in this location, with our experience, there's absolutely no doubt that the plants were massively better in the beds. Now, of course, the soil in the beds has to be good, nice, that they can get their roots into, not, not the sort of compact soil I've got in our borders, that's not nice at all, but, but in here, this was sieved, um, prepared properly, tons of organic matter, so the tomatoes like to grow in here. The only problem is that after a few years, they don't like to grow in here anymore. There can be that build-up of soil-borne 
pathogens that reduces the vigor and health of the plant. And then of course you get fewer tomatoes and of, of lesser quality. So that's why I looked to grafting this year. And I was very pleased to find out I could successfully graft all of the old varieties that I want to grow onto the modern rootstock without any trouble. And that seems to have solved the problem because we had a huge yield from the greenhouses here. I think in general the grafted plants did much better than the ungrafted plants. The only point on which the ungrafted plants did at least as good and possibly a bit better was getting the first fruit ripe. So the ungrafted plants, they were simply plants from the same sowing that I didn't graft or couldn't graft because the stem sizes were wrong or, or for whatever reasons. So they were a few weeks ahead of the grafted plants because that grafting process sets them back by two or three weeks. It, it takes time for them to recover and start growing away again. But even allowing for that, I don't think there was any advantage and there may have been some small detriment with the grafted plants in terms of getting the first ripe tomato. I got that from the polytunnel. But across all of the other criteria, the grafted plants were clearly superior. They were much more vigorous plants. You can see that from the diameters of the stems. They were healthier, they cropped for longer, the trusses had more fruit, the individual fruits were larger, they were of fantastic quality. So on, on all other points, the grafted plants won, I think, fairly easily. So I'm, I'm certainly going to try and do this again next year. But the one thing I've always believed with the grafted plant, I, I've, I've bought a few in the past just to play around with, but mostly we, we've just sown our own because the varieties I want to grow aren't, aren't really available as grafted plants. The one thing I've always thought is that in order to get the most out of it, you need to give them plenty of room in the soil. I don't see a lot of point in buying a grafted plant and sticking it in a small pot. Um, I, I know people do buy grafted plants and stick them in pots and of course they're going to grow okay but in the pot you don't really need the resistance to soil borne pathogens because you can use clean soil in your pots but you're not giving them really the volume of soil that they need in order to thrive. You can see just how substantial the root system is here and I don't know I, I just think that if you cram that into a, a small pot it's like sticking a supercharged V12 in a Robin Reliant. You've got all the power in the world but you can't use it. So maybe that's not a great analogy but that's kind of how I look at these grafted plants. If you've got the opportunity to stick the tomatoes in the ground and, and provided it's, it's good soil, good fertile soil, reasonable depth, not too heavy so that they can get the roots down easily into it, I think that is what's going to give the best results, the best yield, the most vigorous tomato plants and the best tasting fruit. I haven't done any proper scientific studies of it, it's just my opinion and of course I would be very interested to hear any alternative views in the comments but anyway I just thought it'd be interesting to take a little look at the root systems to see if there was an obvious difference. I'd expected a difference of course these root stocks are meant to be vigorous and I reckon that is quite clear from looking at these, these thick old roots that they've produced. So, yeah, that's something slightly different for this video, but that is all for today. So thank you ever so much for watching and bye for now.